Hi guys, this is Brandon Miller here with another ActionScript 3 tutorial. What I'm going to show you how to do tonight is how to take a group of buttons, assign them to an array, and then assign all of the buttons in that group an event listener along with some other attributes, and then use just one function to make all of my buttons do whatever it is I want them to do. The um, very first thing I did was I laid out eight buttons on my stage and a text box. The text box is going to display something when I click on a button. Um, each one of these buttons has an instance name. The first one is mad but, the second is happy but, then the third is sad, furious, blah, dumbfounded, etc, etc. Um, what I did first in my action script was I assigned the variable clicked to be my mouse event dot click. You don't have to do this. You can drop this right in an event listener if you want. This is just a little bit more readable to me and anybody else that I may have uh, looking at my code. Um, variable buttons. I'm going to set that up to be a new array, and I'm going to drop each one of my buttons into this array. So I'm going to drop mad button, happy button, sad button, furious button, and uh, all of the rest of them. Now you can split up an array onto multiple lines if you like, just so long as you end it here with a comma. Uh, you can do just about anything you want. I like it this way because it is organized just the same as it is on my stage. So what I'm going to do to get through all of my buttons in this array and assign them an event listener and what I'm going to assign is a button mode, um, I'm going to set up a for loop. And the way a for loop works is you first assign a variable, variable a equals zero, that's just an arbitrary variable. Then you set up your condition. Here my condition is while a is less than buttons.length, if that's true, then I'm going to add one to a. Um, now buttons.length, what this is, is this is the length of the new array. I have eight objects in this array, so the buttons.length is going to be eight. Now when I call an object from this this array, I do it like this right here. I do buttons, open square bracket, the number of the object I want to call, and then I close the square bracket. It's important to know that your arrays are zero based. They're not, they don't start with the number one. I do have eight objects in here, and when I call buttons.length, I am going to get the number eight. But if I want to call mad button, the very first object in my array, I'm going to call buttons square bracket zero close square bracket. So that's why I assign my variable a to be equal to zero. So this is actually zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So my condition here, while a is less than buttons.length, that's going to work because I'm going to go zero through seven, and when it hits eight, which is the length, it's going to kill this loop. So if you do a statement like this, you'll always get all of your, your buttons. If you set A to be equal to 1, you're going to miss out the very first button that you have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call buttons A, which is whatever variable number I happen to be on in this loop here, and then I'm going to set the button mode of that variable of that object in the array to be equal to true. So when I mouse over this guy, he's going to give me a nice happy pointer finger. And then I'm going to set whichever variable number object in the buttons I'm on here, I'm going to set an event listener clicked, which is this up here, mouse event dot click, to be running function button click. And then it's just going to end the loop when it hits the end of my array. Now the next thing I'm going to do here is my function button click. I'm going to pass e colon event to it, which um, you can name e whatever you want to name it, but you have to pass an event to this function and I'm not going to be returning anything back from it so I'm going to do colon void and I'm going to start my switch statement. Now I did another tutorial on the switch statement. If you haven't watched that I suggest you do. Um, I'm just going to glance right over this because it's pretty quick and easy to understand. Um, in the case where e.target.name, e being the event, the target of the event being the button that I click and the dot name being that button's instance name right here in the event that e.target.name equals mad butt, text box text is going to be mad and this funky little face here. And then I'm going to exit my switch statement. Now in case that it's uh, happy butt, my text box is going to say happy with a smiley face. And then I'm going to break. Um, and that iterates down through all of my possible buttons on the stage. So uh, what I do here, just one more time, is I assign all of my buttons to an array. I then 
run a for loop starting at the first button, going to the last button in the array, and I add the button mode to it, and then I add an event listener to it. So all of them have the same event listener. When they're clicked, they all run the same function, and this function just takes the name of them and decides what to do with that button based on the name. And it looks like this when you run it. Here you can see my nice little happy devil faces. And um, I click on Mr. Mad and it says mad. I click on Mr. Happy and he's happy. Sad, sad, and furious is furious. So it's just that simple to assign all of your buttons in 10 lines of code. You can assign every single button on your stage an event and then in your function just one function you can set up a switch statement to make every single button do whatever it is you want it to do now this doesn't have to be textbox.text .text. I could make it do whatever I wanted in in this case statement um, I hope you guys learned a little something from this tutorial and I hope you start to use it have a good night